let me make sure. So, um, it's so funny, I'm so nervous right now. Um, and I actually grown up on this stage, I mean, on Jane Beyond stage. It's the ninth edition. My first keynote was in 2013. And so, so yeah, it's amazing and I'm so happy to be here and I want to thank Robert and all the team because every year we make stories for all of you to come uh, and enjoy. So, <laughs> yes, please, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'm sure that all of you have a favorite story. Um, mine, as you may guess, is uh, Alice in Wonderland. Um, I have this book, I got this book as a gift from a friend, um, but I have different copies. It's my favorite story ever, and I, I love it because I feel so in, in touch with the protagonist, Alice. Um, this story is a story that belongs to my childhood. Um, is a story that evokes emotions. Um, and that's why I wanted to bring it to you somehow as a way to explain you how you can create storytelling on the web. So I was telling you that I have, uh, I feel a lot of things in common with Alice from Alice in Wonderland. And um, in fact, as Alice, uh, yes, let's see, sorry. Okay, so, ah, oh, sorry, <laughs> okay. Okay, so, in fact, as Alice, I think uh, I have um, a passion for sweets. I love them, so you got some of them, some of my favorite one that comes from the island where I live right now in Greece. Um, as Alice, I own a cat. You may know about that because I tweet about him on Twitter and Facebook. Um, and his name is Kissa. And as Alice, I am a curious person. As a designer, I always uh, like to find creative ways to, uh, for my clients to find solutions for them. Uh, but also, my curiosity brought me here, probably. My curiosity brought me also in, in really strange situations that I couldn't get out, exactly like Alice. So we are here about, but, um, because I want you to think about storytelling as a possibility, the, as a possible way to approach your next web project. And um, before even going to storytelling, I would like you to, to understand why uh, storytelling is important for you. There are studies, recent studies, that uh, prove that the average user spent three minutes and 55 seconds so very little, to uh, see and browse your website, rich content websites. Of course, the average user spend more time on Facebook and on YouTube for obvious reasons. But in general, the time you have to convince someone that your product, your website is great, it's uh, very little, three minutes and 50, uh, 55 seconds. So what I'm trying to do today is to help you increase this amount of time, so the amount of time people can spend on your site and, and enjoy it by using storytelling. So even before going to the storytelling itself, I would like you to think uh, about two questions. One is, um, who, who is your us user? So who is your audience, first of all? And the second one is, what are your goals? So even before laying down your, the characters, the plot, the action, the emotions that you want to add in your website, you need to have clear in your mind who you are talking about. This is a really common practice for writers and journalists all over the world. But maybe for us it's more obvious, like, yeah, I know my user, just build my website. This is not really the right approach for storytelling. So only when you know your audience and your users, you can start, your, sorry, your audience and your goals, then you can start building the narrative voice. So who is going to talk about your product, about your organization, about your, um, I don't know, your not-for-profit uh, initiative, anything. So just to make some examples, for example, Google is the main voice, the narrative voice of all the products they produce. So Google is a brand, so they talk as a brand, but, uh, for many years, 
and company like Apple use Steve Jobs as a frontman, as a narrative voice. And uh, organizations that have many people, sometimes they have a frontman, like Chris Du. If you know him, he's the founder of the future. He's uh, um, kind of an organization that teach business to designers. And he is together with other people, but he's the front man, the charismatic person who's presenting the, the company. Companies like Volkswagen, BMW, they use their own product to talk about, about their companies. They don't talk as a brand, they don't use a person. Most of the time they use their own product as a narrative voice. And whenever, when you don't have either a front man, like a charismatic front man, like a Steve Jobs or Chris Du, or a really strong brand, or maybe you have a strong brand, but you want to approach a new audience, you may use a mascot, like Ronald McDonald for the McDonald brand. So once you have defined your narrative voice, you have defined the tone of voice. Is it friendly? Is it authoritative? Is it uh, formal? Is it informal? You decide it. Then you, you move into the real storytelling. So I divided for you to make it easy somehow how you can build storytelling on the web. As you can see, the structure is not different from any book you may find. So the, the elements you, you have are, of course, characters, plot, actions, and emotions. So now for you, it sounds all familiar. And you may say, OK, I know. I need to build characters and all that. But while on book, this is really easy. On the web, it becomes a little bit tricky. So I'm going to break them down for you, each component. And we are going to examine it together. And then I will show you some nice examples on how you can apply storytelling uh, on your next web project. So let's start with characters. So as you know, Alice is the main character of uh, Alice in Wonderland. And Lewis Carroll wrote this story based on a real, pers uh, real person, a real child. So when you build a character, you have to develop a really nice um, persona, a really nice um, um, a, a realistic story around him. So you need to know what they, they will do, how they will act, how they, they, they interact with each other, if there are many. And uh, the only problem when you develop a really nice personality is that not only you have the characters in your, on your website, but the user is part of your story. You see, in books like this one, you just open the page and you say, I want to read page number 63. And then you move to the end. And so, but the story remains linear. This is not going to change. But actually, what the user does on the website, he jumps wherever he wants to go. There is no way you can stop him. There is no way you can tell him you had to read from A to Z. He may start from the last page of your website and then go back to the first page. So you need to think about your users. And that's why I say in the first place that you need to know your user first. So you know how they will go and move the, the narration further. So, so the roles need to be clear. Protagonist, the protagonist, your characters, and the user. Once you have defined them, then you start building your plot. So then you start building how they will interact with each other. Um, in general, all plots have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And uh, plots in books are usually really linear. So we have a beginning. So if we think about Alice in Wonderland, she just fell into, uh, fell down the rabbit hole, and then from the rabbit hole, she start, there are adventures she lives. So there is the middle where everything happened, the actions. And then after the action, we have, of course, the end, where, where the happy end, or, or to be continued. So you, you need another book to see how the story will go on. But on web, unfortunately for you, the plot is not linear. The beauty of creating storytelling on the web is that the web is unpredictable. The user may go wherever he wants, and so he may jump from the end until from to the home page, and from the home page into the middle of your articles pages. So most designers, what, what, as a designer, the approach is, I designed the home page and I'm good with it. Well, I'm, I have a bad news for you. 
When you design the home page, this is just the beginning of your story. But it doesn't mean the user will start from the home page. He may come to your website through a ser the service door. So from an article he found on Google, from the contact page somebody gave it to him. You never know. So how can you solve the problem that in this case? Well, the right approach is not, thi not to think the home page is the beginning of your story, but as a part of the story. So of course, your home page needs a lot of care to be built. But the most important is that you create all the pages in, in the context. So you put always the user in the right perspective. So once you have defined your plot, um, make sure you have a great end. So when you build a story, um, any story, you always have an end. And the end should be something that people can take with them and share with somebody else. It can be a video, it can be uh, an ebook, it can be just an emotion or a new knowledge, or it can be just a boring form to feel. Make sure that everything keeps the right expectation till the end so that you have this grand finale. So that people want to go on and coming back to your website even more. So once you have defined the plot and you have the characters, the next step is about the actions. So you, as I told you before, you can't control how the user will move inside your website. This is really, uh, really difficult science. But what you can do is assisting him during the navigation. But you need to keep in mind that you have uh, really important ways. I mean, there are two levels you can interact with your user. Uh, in, in, uh, in a book, we have some elements, right? In books, usually, the character interacts with something, and this something creates a twist in the plot. So, for example, in Merlin, we have this word inside the rock, so, and this is make the, the story change all suddenly. Or in Alice in Wonderland, when it, whatever she eats something, you never know if she will become bigger or smaller. This is really unpredictable for Alice. Or in, uh, in Cinderella, she lost the shoes in the middle of uh, uh, the ballet and while she was dancing, while she was leaving um, for, um, from the ballet, from the dance. And you think, okay, this is the end. Now she, this is the end. So children are always like, wow, and now what's gonna happen? But actually the shoe is the way to, to, for her to meet the future husband, so the prince, so it's a, um, a vehicle for a happy end. So of course we can't add this kind, we cannot add shoes or uh, sweets on our website, so material stuff. So we need to work with what we have on the web. So the web used two levels to create actions. One is the visual level, and the other one is the content level. So the visual level is about how the website looks, so is uh, thinking about the colors, how you combine them, how you define the colors of your links so that people know that these are links and not just text, how you create hierarchy in your page. This is all about um, visual elements, or even the contrast of the text on your, on your page. This is all on the visual level. And then this visual level needs to bal be balanced with the content level, which is all about um, how you, uh, you, you the, the content you present, so the meaning of your website. So headlines, um, articles, so everything that is written needs to have a meaning and everything that is presented through images and videos needs to be connected with your words. So nothing needs to be left to chances. And when I say by interaction on the content level, I also mean the labels you use and buttons, the little tips you add next to the form to help your people, the, the, the user to fill the form, or even the hidden 404 page that you forgot to style it. That needs to be inside your story too, because someone may, be, may, may get lost. So you want them to go back where they, where they were. So once we have actions and um, and this is really um, one important level, and this is the way we develop stories, we need to go into the emotions. This is probably where storytelling gets a little bit more difficult. It's really difficult to give emotion to something that is uh, in, um, interactive, but it's on, on a screen, right? An emotion is given to you by a smile, an emotion is given to you by a hug. But books are to told us, and storytelling told us that actually you can create emotions, even if you cannot touch these people, even if you cannot see them from up close. So 
to create a story, you need a unique story, you need to stimulate the brain. To create emotion, you need to stimulate some specific hormones. And when I say about hormones, I want you to have a look to a TED talk. It's called The Magical Science of Storytelling. And, uh, and this talk is really amazing. Um, this guy actually stimulates the brain of the people while he's on the stage. And so they are going to leave emotions while he talks. It's really amazing, and I advise you to have a look to it. The Magical Science of Storytelling. This is how it's called. So why I'm talking about the brain? Because that when the brain leaves emotions, um, it becomes more focused, it's more motivated, and also it's completely engaged. So no matter what happens around him, he wants just to go on and see even more. So this is what our, why are emotions so important. And most of all, when there are emotions, they want to, f to go on, want to, want to see more, want to see what's next. So you have different tools you can use on, uh, on the web. So the first tools, which is obvious to everyone, are, of course, videos and images. These are really easy to put on web, but the important is that whatever you use, it's you need to know that your user can feel close to those people that are in your videos or close to the experiences explained in the video. Or um, authentic testimonials. So you need to make really credible, you need to make sure that the testimonials are credible. The people actually talking about your brand or your product actually had a real experience. And another tool is uh, create real brand. So some, a brand that is human is a brand that understands what the user's uh, concerns are. So you're not leaving them thinking, OK, I'm a good established brand. That's it. Take it as it is. No, you want to be human. So make sure that you create emotion through uh, creating a real brand. And change the perspective, which is probably the most difficult one. When you know that brand or their product, you think you know it, you completely change the plot and you tell them, no, actually you don't know me enough. Look what I'm able to do with you. So I know that all this is really theoretically and I know that probably sounds difficult to you. You may tell me, okay, Chiara, um, great. I have characters, I have plot, I have action and I have emotions, but how can I combine them on the web? This is really difficult. Oh, it sounds really dumb oh, as a skill. It's not that difficult, but it that gen generally takes a little bit of time. And uh, of course, a little bit of skills too. And you don't have to be just a developer or just a designer. You need a bunch of people to help you with that. So to make sure you understand what I'm trying to tell you today, I collect three very beautiful examples. Uh, you may know, may don't know, but since January, I'm part of the awards organization. I'm a jury. So every uh, day, I need to judge five websites. They are then um, called, they are then uh, prized as, uh, awarded as the best website of the year. So those sites that we are going to see right now, they were site of the month. That means they were the best sites presented until today. So, Let's start with the first one, and I'm going to show you how I navigated them, and I'm going to tell you how actually they were able to build stories. So imagine that you want to present to your user an environment they are not aware to, uh, about it, because they're not familiar with. So this website is dedicated to the LGBT community, and they dance uh, uh, floor. They, they are all dancers. So, I'm going to start the, the presentation, and uh, you will see this website is using narrative voice. So I need to see if it starts. Hmm. Let's see. Does it work? Yes. Welcome to the Fab Swag Boat Battles. I'll be your host, MC Queen Kapus. Can we have more audio? Let me introduce you to the girls. Battle, then choose a winner to unlock their story. DJ, pump the beat. So we have the narrative voice. And now my, my um, browsing is starting. I need to choose two dancers. They're going to battle each other. So by clicking on one of them, 
I can see who I want Tamatoa to dance with. And I decided it's Fang. The nice thing is once I choose my characters, I can then choose where the fight is going to happen, where, where the dance is going to happen. So these are all um, environments where they can dance. So I choose one, which is this one. And now my experience is loading, my story is loading. So, I choose that Fang is the winner. So, what's going to happen is as soon as I choose my winner, I unlock a next story. I can either decide to discover who is Fang, I can either go to, I can go to a new battle, so I can choose new dancers, or I can go and ask Fang to dance with other dancers and fight other dancers. So how this website builds storytelling? So as you can see, there are characters. They are all well defined. It, behind each character, there is a, a real story. Not only. Um, I can, there is a really ra nice combination between videos, images, and sound. Unfortunately, can we have the sound a little bit more higher? Yeah? Can we, please? Because otherwise it's not giving the idea. Because imagine now I was at home with my headphones, look at this, it's really nice and powerful. So, and I'm sorry it doesn't give that to you right now, but I can assure you, uh, if you look at this website, it will give you this kind of feeling and adrenaline going on. And then the challenges. The nice thing is that the, I can create challenges. So, so actually, there is someone behind me that's already created this story, has already individuated characters, places where they will be, that where the action will happen, and uh, has uh, also created uh, uh, pre-created some specific uh, things I can do. However, my way, to, uh, my experience will be completely different from your experience. My winner will be probably completely different from your winner. So this is where, when I say the user is actively, actively interacting with your website. So you have to build a story really careful because the user can go wherever he wants and create a completely different story that you had in mind. So this is one way to create storytelling. And um, I want to show you another way. And I really need audio here, really. I'm going to stop it if they don't have audio. So um, this is really a nice website. So imagine you have a not-for-profit organization, or an organization where you want people to feel they are making a difference with every each action. So even if it's a tiny one. So this is a website built for people who have uh, mental issues. And, in, and most of these people come from fair, fair, develop, um, fair developed countries. So where mental issues is not something that's common. Actually, they think they are bewitched or they have uh, other kind of problem. So they're trying to be cured through religion, to voodoo and other, and other things. Actually, what they need is help, is real help. And so this website, Can I have audio, please? No? So, anyway, there is a really nice music uh, behind this uh, uh, website and uh, the nice combination between words, keywords, and images. So, what I choose is uh, the left behind. So this is the narrative voice in this case. Describe it through words, so no one is talking like in the first uh, uh, website. 
and then I can go around pictures. So all these people are people that have uh, real problems, mental issues. And behind each photograph, there is uh, a story about them, how they survive, how they face their, their problems in the environment where they live, how they are received by the society. And I can go on navigating even more to discover other people who, have, uh, who are the left behind. And pictures are beautiful. You can see struggling, you can see the use of color, which is none. I mean, it's black and white. You may wonder why. Because this is how the people feel. I mean, people like them feel probably in a tunnel where no one may understand them. So they are completely isolated. So when you visit this website, you actually have the feeling that you want to help them because they, you feel how alone they feel. Um, and when you, you, you are moved by this website, you probably want to look away to help those people, maybe taking action, so making donation, or even submit a story of a person that you know so they may ask for help. So this website is using similar elements, but a completely tone of voice, a completely different way to create stories. In this way, we, want, we are not trying to create, um, we are trying to create empathy, we are trying to create compassion. And, um, and of course, all these characters represented here are real people. They are all representing one by one. There is a, a great combination between visual content and and uh, a visual level, a content level, so where images matches with the word. There's nothing is left to, uh, to, to, I mean, everything is really well curated. And videos, of course. Some of the videos are not visible in this navigation, but the picture just already say a lot about it. So, the last website is about something that I loved when I was a child, is the Play-Doh. Do you know Play-Doh? Who, who played with Play-Doh when it was a, uh, yes, you are all my, my people. So, um, so Play-Doh is a really well-known toy, and even today, it's a really, children loved it. So uh, if we had to sell Play-Doh through the features, we may say that Play-Doh has a lot of features, right? It's uh, soft, colorful, it is safe, which is a really important part of uh, the product, because imagine parents, they don't want to give to their children something that is not safe. And uh, it stays fresh, so you can, do, you can reuse it all the time. And you can create them as many colors as you want if you use them all together, you mix all together. For some reason, my, when I was mix, mixing them, I always get something brownish. I don't know about you, but I don't know. It was not really working well, at least in the 80, 86, that was the time I was playing with Play-Doh. So, so selling Play-Doh by its features, it probably won't get them where they are right now. It would be just boring. Imagine, now, yeah, Play-Doh is, is safe. Oh. Play-Doh is colorful, eh, okay, but there are so many colorful things. I, why not Lego? I mean, why not? So it wouldn't be compelling. So what Play-Doh is doing for so many years is not telling you there is a, a modeling compound. It's telling you that is a, a product, is a, a way to give freedom to your children, to let their imagination go wild. But what happens when your children start getting crazy and wild? You end up probably with a gallery of um, strange animals, all created with uh, Play-Doh. So now, sorry. Yeah, less is already be there. <laughs> so this is a nice gallery of uh, animals, all created using Play-Doh. And uh, so I can scroll and see the little animals. They're all curious. By hovering, I can read their names, which are all funny. Actually, you want to click all of them to discover their stories. And I decided to choose this one. The Pelly French Can-Can. The best moment to watch this gorgeous animal is without doubt at the end of spring, the mating season. You will have to be patient until sunset if you want to get a chance to attend this incredible mating dance. The love parade of the Petty French Can-Can 
is so full of energy, grace, and seduction that you will remember it for the rest of your days. That is a nice song, this thing. Okay. <laughs> so, again, you may say, I don't have real characters. I, can't, I don't know where to start from. But maybe you can imagine them. So how the so how Play-Doh did. So you have a product, and, but you don't have characters. Just imagine them. Imagine something that can play the role of your, of your product. And then create signs, sounds, and narrative voices. It can be like this one, like reading a book. This is a site, a site directed to parents and to children of certain age. And then, of course, add some humor. So all the website can be really serious, but if you add humor, people love, have fun, or laugh a little bit. It's just to forget the everyday stress they, they are in sometimes. So again, so selling um, through storytelling can be really, really difficult. But I want to give you some way you can start with, so some little steps. So start building storytelling for your next project first by creating focus. So this is one way. So if you already are able to keep your users three minutes and 55 seconds on, over your website, navigating your website, you're already good at it. But let's go a little bit further. And when you are able to build focus, go into teaching. Instruct them. Give them something to learn. I told you before, something they can keep with them and take away. Do you, do you know Aesop stories? I love them. I love them because when I was a child, I could find always something that inspired my day, how to survive in my life somehow. That's what I, what I like from Aesop. And, but when you want to create a memorable story, unique way to, to people talk about you, about your website, so that the experience can be shared, then you have to go to upper levels, which are engaging and inspiring the users. Only then you have created a real storytelling, quite close to Lewis Carroll, Alice in Wonderland. And talking about Alice in Wonderland, I just want to leave you with, just, with one advice that's coming from the kings of art which says, begin at the beginning and go on till you come to the end. Then stop. Doesn't make much sense, I know. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? I don't know, but... <laughs> Any questions on Slido? No, nothing? Okay. okay. So I was good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.